this is not a heroic group of people. These are people that, uh, you know, basically are are looking to hide behind hostages, including, you know, children and, and their own population. So uh, I don't have any confidence whatsoever that uh, Hamas is going to stay put. Hamas has rejected proposals in the latest ceasefire talks in Cairo. Israel has also withdrawn most of its troops from the southern city of Khan Yunus. Uh, well, let's speak to Colonel Brendan Kearney, military affairs analyst and former chief of staff for the US Marine Corps forces in Europe, uh, who also work with NATO. Brendan, good evening to you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hi, Rick. Good talking to you. Now, now six months on, how close are Israel to eliminating Hamas, as they've stated, as their target? Well, you know, they're a lot closer than they were six months ago, that's for sure. Uh, they have uh, uh, wrecked uh, tremendous devastation uh, on Hamas, uh, but they haven't finished the job, nor my, they may very well never finish the job. Uh, you know, it's a very loose organization. It has its own organizational challenges, um, it's suffered tremendous casualties. It's used up a lot of its ordnance, its its equipment, its rockets. Um, it's lost a lot of its infrastructure in terms of the tunnels that they had laboriously built over a period of decades. Um, so the Israelis have done an awful lot of damage, uh, and they could probably do some more. But again, you know, it's uh, this is this is one of those things. It's. It's like a you know a hive of ants. Uh, you're going to get most of them, but some are going to escape, and then uh, that'll be the problem down the road. Many of Hamas's prominent leaders in Gaza, including Yahya Sinwar, are still believed to be alive. Brendan, is that one of the reasons why Israel will will not stop its bombardment of many areas in Gaza as it continues to target those tunnels where they believe some of these people are hiding? Yeah, they believe they're in there, uh, these leaders, and they also believe uh, that the leaders are very, very closely co-located with the hostages that are in there. Um, and that's a, that's a purposeful effort on the part of Hamas uh, to go ahead and seek uh, protection, knowing that once the Israelis find out where they are, that they're going to have to very carefully and deliberately, which means moving slowly, uh, you know, over concerns about the hostages to try to safeguard their well-being. Uh, and, of course, moving slowly gives the Hamas leadership a chance to further escape or to move further uh, maybe into ne tunnel networks that the Israelis have not identified yet. Uh, or, as I've, I, I'm completely convinced, Rick, that Hamas has got a whole series of escape plans for their leadership, uh, but they don't want to do that right away. They want to appear, appear heroic um, there in, in Gaza to the Palestinian people and to the world, uh, and they don't want to be uh, bugging out, so to speak, uh, too early. They want to do that at the last minute. What, what, what do you mean by, by that, Brendan? When you talk about escape plans, are you talking about getting some of Hamas leaders out of Gaza if it came to a last standoff, if you like? Yes. I don't believe, Rick, that uh, the senior leadership of Hamas that's still in Gaza wants to die in place. Uh, they live a very, very good life. Their families, most of their families don't live uh, in Gaza, they're often Qatar or in other countries around the Middle East and the world, and uh, they're going to want to survive to fight another day. Uh, th this is not a heroic group of people. These are people that, uh, you know, basically are are looking to hide behind hostages, including, you know, children and and their own population. So uh, I don't have any confidence whatsoever that uh, Hamas is going to stay put. Some will. I think there will be those members of their leadership uh, that do feel a moral certainty to go ahead and be the last man standing. But I think those are few and far between when it comes to this leadership. Brendan, thanks very much for that. Good to speak to you tonight. Always, Rick. Talk soon. Former chairman of the U.S. National Intelligence Council under President Barack Obama. Greg, are you there? 
I am there. Thank you. Sorry I'd be late. No, no, absolutely no problem at all. Uh, it's good to hear good to hear your voice. Um, so Hamas has rejected proposals uh, made by a multitude of countries in the latest ceasefire talks in in Cairo. Greg, do we have any idea why these ceasefire talks continue to break down? I think that the interests of, uh, it's pretty clear to me at this point that the interests of Hamas are probably not by having a ceasefire and releasing a lot of hostages. As your previous guest said, now the hostages are all the more valuable because they're uh, providing a shield for Hamas leaders in the tunnels under Gaza. So it, it seems like what happens is we get close to an agreement. President Biden several weeks ago said he thought we'd had one. Uh, and then one side or the other, mostly Hamas, says we, we can't do this. So I, it seems to me they have at this point not much incentive to uh, uh, reach an agreement if it means a big ceasefire and particularly releasing the hostages. Because that's in some ways their only lifeline, right, is that having those hostages as a, as a bargaining chip and as a way of protection. What do we know about Hamas's extensive tunnel network? I mean, the IDF, uh, the Israeli Defense Forces say they destroyed a great deal of the terrorist infrastructure in Gaza, but clearly huge parts of it still remain. So it seems. So we, we, we don't know for all the, all the, the work and fighting the, the Israelis have done. Uh, they've obviously destroyed lots of tunnels or lots of things in those tunnels. But uh, they were certainly surprised, and I think all of us were surprised, by just how much work and how extensive those tunnels were. We, we knew that Gaza was getting money through Qatar, but we didn't know exactly what it was being spent on. And obviously a lot of it went to trying to build facilities and tunnels uh, under underground. And that network has seen, my guess is there are still pieces of it that the Israelis don't know about or haven't discovered. Um, that makes the task for them especially difficult because it means going slowly and then risking hostages, mm. getting killed. Greg, Greg, what do we know about the main players who are working to try and achieve a ceasefire in Gaza? We know that the Qataris are centre stage here. Who else right. is bringing the two sides together? Well, I mean, we, the United States has been active and Egypt has been active. Those that seem to me to be the main players. You know, Mr. Biden keeps saying ceasefire. We need it now. We need it now. And now I think the U.S. administration is really prepared to put serious pressure on Israel, pressure on the arms flow in particular, uh, which would be kind of unprecedented, but certainly would signify a very different phase in U.S.-Israeli relations and a very different phase in this conflict and the personal conflict between President Biden and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Well, that, that's fascinating that, that you think there could be pressure on the arms flow from the US point of view, because, of course, over here in the UK, um, in the last four or five days, that has dominated a lot of the discussion about whether or not, and it would be, uh, it wouldn't be, it would be insignificant compared to the US's arms flow to Israel. But the, it has dominated uh, opinion here and talk and discussion on the conflict about whether the UK should stop its arms sales because of events of the last week. But that wouldn't actually happen, Greg, would it? The, the, the US would, ever, would never actually cut that off. Probably not. <laughs> and I, I would assume that uh, Netanyahu wouldn't be silly enough to push that comply. far. Yeah. Uh, um, but so far, he's been very stubborn, as we've seen and uh, keeps rejecting pleas by everybody to have a ceasefire and uh, improve the conditions in Gaza. He's done so now. They've moved a little ways to improving the conditions in Gaza. But, you know, I guess 300 trucks got in yesterday, which but that's mm. that's a lot, but not nearly enough. It's, you know, 500 trucks is what they really need, everybody says. Uh, and so that, that's gotten a, a bit better. But otherwise, he's been pretty... Uh, pretty stubborn. It, it feels like he worries these days more about his right than he worries about the United States. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Greg, um, I know we had a bit of trouble getting hold of you tonight, so really appreciate you, you taking the time to to find a decent connection to talk to us. So thanks so much. Oh, no, my pleasure. Thank you. Always fun to talk to you.